This is PlaneMaker Tutorial 39 and Blender Part 25. We're going to talk about nose gear retraction today. I want to cover just a little bit of modeling. I won't be spending much time on modeling anymore just simply because I, I think that you most likely already got the hang of it or at least know where to find information on this. But again, for this front wheel you could use several different modeling techniques, one of them being starting out with a circle and modeling outwards like this with extrusions and resizings and get a sort of decent wheel profile this way, etc. And then you have something like this, and you can mirror it on the other side. The other technique would involve, it's probably the technique that I would use here, it would involve creating a side profile of the tire and mirroring that on the other side. And then basically just uh, holding down the control button, you would basically left click on your mouse on the uh, points that you want this profile to be defined. And I'm doing this very roughly. This would have to be fine-tuned by you if, if you're doing this. And because it's mirrored on both sides, you have a nice uh, tire profile that you would end up tweaking a little better. If you go to side view then, and you say spin this around like a potter's wheel, and I want 36 steps here and 360 degrees, you just go spin, and you have to remove those two doubles that overlap. And then you'll have a nice tire, which you'll be able to set smooth with this smooth feature and you'll also be able to put a edge split modifier on it. it would make the um, boundaries between the different rings nice and crisp and then I would apply the one mirror modifier and just uh, offset the tire by a bit and then put another mirror modifier on just to make the other tire on the other side of the plane that's roughly how you would uh, make the tires and we'll have to cover skinning them some other time I'll delete that just to get going with the animation here Okay, what you want to do is you want to consider the hierarchy of this whole assembly. First thing we have is we have this gear retracting and all the other components of this landing gear will depend on that retraction animation. So what we'll have to do is we'll have to put an armature here first and parent everything else to this armature and then animate this armature. For the landing gear to be extended it has the value of uh, 1 and for it to be retracted it has the value of 0. But in Blender, everything is offset by one point, so we can't put 0 here. We can't, it doesn't go lower than 1, so we'll have to consider 0, the 1, and 1, the 2. So if extended is 1, then we have to use the second frame in Blender to state that it's a value of 1 in X-Plane. So here we uh, put a rotational keyframe, and then we go back to frame number 1 and do the same thing again in the retracted position. So now we have a basic retraction animation. We select the... Uh, data ref for retraction deploy ratio and this is the array index and what that means is if you go to plane maker and you go to the landing gear screen you'll see three columns here that define the landing gear of the ERJ now the first column is the front wheel and the second and third column are the main gears you want them to coincide this zero represents you're dealing with column number one if I put a one here I'm dealing with column number two here and if I put a 2 here, I'm dealing with column number 3. And you want that to coincide because different landing gear touches down at different times and you'll notice different animations and those kinds of things. You want it to coincide with what X-Plane is doing internally with all this stuff. So this should give us a functionality of basic gear retraction in X-Plane. Let's test it out. The nose gear is displayed as not spinning and not uh, steering and not shock absorbing. But we should see a res retraction happening once we pull up and hit the G button. And sure enough, that's what we see. That's what we came here to see. So we can go back to Blender and uh, concentrate on the next step. So the next step is the steering mechanism. Okay, I'll add another armature here, point this one forward so that we can recognize it. I'll resize it. And then I'm going to unparent all the parts that will end up being parented to the steering bone. And now I'm going to parent all these parts to the steering bone. And this bone has to be parented then to the retraction bone. So what we should see here is that we can spin this bone independently and because we want to use a keyframe number one for left steering and keyframe number two for right steering, we have to figure out what to do with this bone. And there's a handy little feature in Blender that allows you to put everything into its rest position and this now causes this bone to remain unaffected by the change of uh, frame here. And that's really handy to be animating the rest of this wheel. Let's go into top view and go for keyframe number one. Let's animate the wheel to 45 degrees to the left, 45 degrees to the right. Now we go and assign it 
the front wheel steering functionality, gear, tire steer actual degree. The reason we're not using the command degree is because this one would more likely be used for like rudder pedals, the command that you're giving the front tire to steer. And then this is the actual degrees that the tire is steering. For frame number one, we have minus 45, and for frame number two, we have 45 degrees. Always remember to match the index number with the set of wheels you're working on. In this case, it's zero, so I don't have to change it. Time to test it out. Sure enough, with rudder input, we see the wheels move in, let's hope, the appropriate direction. Yep, it looks like there is a match between the amount of steering that we're seeing and the amount of turning that the plane is doing, and it's doing it in the right direction, so we're good to go. Many times, actually, you'll find that um, it's not quite behaving as expected, so you'll have to go back and tweak it in, in Blender. Let's just double check that the animation of the landing gear retraction is still in line with everything. Yes, it is. So let us go back to Blender and continue on with the next step, which is shock absorption. Keep working our way down the hierarchy, split off the parts that are dependent on shock absorption in addition to steering. We want to always clear parent and keep transformation so that we don't lose the position of these objects. I'm going to add a new armature and I'm going to make it a stick armature and resize it down a little bit. And now we have to parent this bone to the steering bone in blue mode. And basically what that does to us is it allows us to continue animating these parts that will now depend on both vertical deflection and left and right steering. So let's do the parenting all these objects to the vertical deflection bone. And one thing we need to be aware of here, I almost parented it to this bone, but I didn't look at what keyframe I'm in. Now this would have an effect in the simulator that would cause your animation to behave unpredictably in X-Plane. You'd see the wheel positions in the wrong place and all those kinds of things. We have to make sure that we are in the correct frame, always in frame one, but the problem here is again that we have to put this into the rest position so we can animate it properly. Making sure we're in frame number one, we parent it to this bone, and we again know that the shock absorbers are extended in position one and retracted in position two. We'll give it a keyframe of location on frame number one and a second keyframe of location on frame number two. Now, what kinds of units are we talking about? These are metric units, and each one of these big squares is one meter, and each one of these tiny squares is one tenth of a meter or ten centimeters. So what we'll have to do is we'll have to match the vertical movement with blender units, which will then in turn be described by the data ref. We're moving it by 10 centimeters up. And now when it comes time to assign the data ref, gear, tire, vertical deflection, meters. So I've said that it moved up 10 centimeters. This is the unit we're dealing with, and this is the amount we're dealing with. So we have to change this to 0.1 meters to match the actual movement of the tires. And everything seems to be hooked up properly. So then we save and export it, and now we've got the steering, and if we release the brakes, oh yeah, if we activate the brakes, we should see some pretty serious shock absorption action happening. We might have to do some calibration either in Plane Maker or in Blender, just by extending the wheel a little bit. But we can confirm that the retraction all still works, and the steering, the hierarchy is still working properly. So then the next step is to finish off the dependencies of the shock absorption animation which in this case are these struts here. Here's something I think is worth explaining and showcasing. In Blender, you can actually extend bones into parent and children bones, and you can animate them separately. That is not a suitable technique for the X-Plane to Blender script because it gets confused with, with stuff, and it's more suitable to just make a completely separate bone in this case. So what I would do is snap the cursor to a selection point there and then snap the selection back to the cursor. Now we have a perfect alignment. Again, we have to remember to unparent this object from the original parent and parent it to the new animation bone here. And then we have to remember always to parent the new animation bone to or the one that it's dependent on. So here we have the extended deflection scenario. Let's put a rotational keyframe there. And we'll go to the retracted one, and I'll just estimate here. It'll be about uh, 25 degrees. Keep in mind the next one will be parented to this one, and will have to be matched up in order to end up at that uh, linkage point. So I'm going to go ahead and do this next one right away. Same technique. Unparent it from here, then parent it to this bone. And make sure that this bone is parented to that bone. Put in the animation keyframes. 
first one is neutral, second one is I have to go back and tweak the bottom strut to make the top one match up. Okay, so that's pretty close. Okay, now I have to assign that uh, vertical deflection data ref to these two bones. I'm going to copy it from here. Vertical deflection meters. Copy. Oh, I have to remember to put 0 0.1 here as the deflection value. I have to match that deflection value for everything that's going to deflect at the same rate. Let's see if this worked. So now we should see these struts moving in relationship to the uh, shock absorption. And sure enough, we see that. So that's all very nice. And it should all still be dependent on the steering bone and the um, retraction bone. That shouldn't have changed at all. So the last thing to do for this nose gear is to put the tire rotation in. And we follow the same principles. Clear the uh, rotating tires from that uh, parent bone that it was in before, just so that we can insert the tire rotation bone. We'll have one position set to vertically up, and we have to remember to parent this one to the vertical deflection, the shock absorber bone. And now we can animate it. Frame one will be rotation vertical. Frame two will be 90 degrees rotation forward. And then we'll assign a data ref to this. Flight model two, gear, tire rotation, angle degrees. You don't want the speed one, you want the angle one, because we turned it by 90 degrees, and we can match that 90 degrees simply by saying, in frame two, we want that wheel to be turned by 90 degrees forward. And the index is always still zero. So now we hit apply, save, export, and then we check it out. Now we should see a fully animated front wheel that turns, shock absorbs, spins, and retracts. And that is what we see. Some calibration is needed. But just to make you aware of the fact that a lot of things can go wrong in this process, if you don't follow the hierarchy principles, if you don't follow the principle of animating each function in Blender the way that X-Plane reads it from frame one to frame two kind of thing, if you don't have it animated in the right order, you may see some very strange behavior in the front tire. So I've noticed that sometimes it's easier and quicker just to start over, just to make sure that you are following the whole hierarchical checklist, if you will, properly. Next tutorial, I want to cover the main gear. I think it's worth it because what we're dealing with is a lot of the same stuff, so I'll skip over the basic stuff that we did on the nose wheel. What we're going to be talking about more is about how to go about mirroring them from one side to the other so that the functionality is matched on both sides. So thanks for watching, and I hope for now that uh, this is helpful in your project.